So we're here at the Bermad Test and Training Facility, and what we're here to discuss now is what we call the Bermad Model 720 BXW double chambered pressure reducing valve. Pressure reducing valves typically used in most of the water mains are what we refer to as single chambered. In a single chambered valve, the underside of the diaphragm is exposed to the downstream side via two small ports that are on the underside of the, the actuator here. And there's also an internal spring which is fitted to the valve to assist the closure of the valve under zero differential conditions. A double chambered actuator, which can very simply be changed over, whether the valve be 23 years old, brand new or whatever, is very simply and easily changed. What we do is that we fit some control plugs to the underside of the diaphragm here and we remove the plugs on the underside of the diaphragm to expose the underside of the diaphragm to atmosphere. So, when we consider our normal pressure reducing valve, in single chambered, the downstream water pressure is exposed to the underside of the diaphragm. In double chambered, the underside of the diaphragm is exposed to atmosphere. Conditions change as time goes on, and sometimes single chambered valves are simply not suitable for that application. So the ability and the flexibility which Bermad has to be able to modify from one to another is quite critical. Typically the valve will perform identically in regulating the pressure. The primary function of any pressure reducing valve is to maintain a constant downstream pressure, irregardless of upstream pressure, and also maintain a constant downstream pressure irregardless of flow. The double and single chambered valves can still achieve that. But one of the inherent problems that can occur, especially in larger size valves, is that if the upstream pressure comes down to match the downstream pressure, a two-way pressure reducing valve in single chambered tends to have a minimum head loss. In other words, the valve can never fully open because the tubes are exposed to the downstream side of the valve and we have a two-way loop which will not allow the valve to fully open. What that means is that under high flow conditions, if the upstream pressure comes down to match the downstream in single chambered two-way, we always induce a head loss across the valve because it can never 100% open. Now, there are modifications which we can make to do that with additional pilots and accessories, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to discuss how the Bermad 720 double chambered valve is a better option. The double chambered valve uses not a two-way pilot, but it uses a three-way positioning pilot. The three-way pilot has three decisions. It says, apply water to the top cover of the valve by coming from the upstream through the pilot and onto the bonnet to make the valve close. If you achieve the set point you want, you want the valve to sit at the one location and stop water entering the chamber and just leave it in that position. Or if the downstream pressure drops, we want the valve to open and let water vent off the control chamber to atmosphere. Now, when we allow water pressure to open to atmosphere, the valve can now go 100% open. The advantage of that is, is that under high flow conditions, when the upstream water pressure comes down to match the downstream water pressure, the valve can go wide open and still maintain high flows. Now, one of the critical differences in operation about this is, because the underside of the diaphragm is exposed to atmosphere, typically when we have virtually no differential pressure or maybe one meter of differential pressure, this valve is still immediately responsive. Why? Because we've got no pressure acting under the chamber and pressure on top. Typically a normal pressure reducing valve changes its characteristic as the differential pressure changes. In other words, if 
we take a single chambered valve, it will regulate and do a wonderful job uh, in pressure regulation, but tends to become a little lazy when the differential pressure changes. Why is that? Because I may have 50 meters of pressure on the top of the diaphragm, I may have 40 meters underside, so I only have 10 meters of differential pressure. When I have double chambered valves, I always have positive pressure on the top of the bonnet and zero on the underside. So, the net performance of this product is it can operate in a very wide range of flows as a normal PRV does. We can still fit U-ports under the product in here. We can still operate this valve down to zero flows. It'll still modulate, but it can fully open and extend the flow capability of the valve. But most importantly, one of the biggest risks of any hydraulic control valve in operation is a valve getting a condition called lockout. What we mean by lockout is when the pressure is almost equal across the valve, the demand reduces, the upstream pressure rises, in a lockout condition with a single chambered valve, the valve can lock in that position. So as the upstream pressure rises, both pressures rise at the same time, and after some time, it may come back down. Now under that small operating condition, that can break pipes, it can create undue stress on networks, and is not desirable. Double chambered pressure reducing valves will not fail from lockout, and can respond as fast as need be. The response rate of the valve is governed either by a needle valve coming onto the cover, and we can also govern its opening speed. So we can clearly modify the response rate of the valve, but unconditionally, the valve will always be positive in pressure, positive in response, under very low pressure differential conditions. And this is what we refer to as double chambered. So just to summarize, a standard pressure reducing valve can be modified in minutes to double chambered should the operating conditions change to make the valve more responsive under different conditions. Although we're talking about the model 720 BXW pressure reducing valve and double chambered here, it should also be noted one of the characteristics of the valve and how this can be incorporated in many, many other functions in water supply, mining, irrigation, etc. The nature of a valve when it is double chambered and the underside of the diaphragm is exposed to atmosphere is the first thing is, is that the valve acts as a non-return valve or a check valve, which means if the water pressure is exposed on the downstream side is higher than the upstream side, it will close like a normal check valve. So it is in fact a non-return valve in its standard function when it's double chambered. It will close at a linear rate much, much faster than a typical single chambered valve. But importantly, when it gets to the last 20% of its stroke of its opening, it tends to slow down. The net effect is, if you are incorporating or using a double chambered design valve for example, as an altitude valve, tank filling valve, or filling a basin, the double chambered valve ensures positive, very high reliable closing of the valve, which is completely surge free. Surges are generated typically in the last 20% of opening of a valve, and the Bermad valve closes at a linear rate and slows down in the last 20%. Now this makes the valve ideal for altitude, tank filling, basin control type valves, and more importantly, also makes it ideal for flow control valves in an electronic mode, as shown here with dual solenoids, making the setup of the PLC, pulsing of the solenoids, very simple and enormously effective every time the valve wants to change position. When you want fast response, this is when we use double chambered. So let's look at the operation of the valve with water flowing through the valve. <laughs>